Welcome to another episode of The Best of I Am Northwest Arkansas, where we highlight some of the most memorable stories and interviews from our podcast. Today, we take you back to our special feature on the Buffalo National River as it celebrated its 50th anniversary. This episode is a must listen, showcasing the rich history, stunning beauty, and vital significance of this national treasure. If you live in Northwest Arkansas, this is another great reason to make sure you float the buffalo. Let's dive into this episode and discover why the Buffalo National River remains a cherished gem in our community. Support for this episode comes from Signature Bank. Hi, this is Gary Head, Chairman and CEO of Signature Bank of Arkansas. Our bank was founded in Northwest Arkansas in May of 2005. And in 19 years, we have grown to over $1.1 billion in assets and 210 teammates to serve you. We have locations in Bentonville, Springdale, Rogers, Fayetteville, Harrison, Jonesboro, and Brinkley. We have a 100% Latino Hispanic bank in downtown Rogers we call Banco C. We're opening our second Banco C early this summer in downtown Springdale on Emma Street. We have a talented group of bankers that love the communities that we serve. All of our bankers have the authority to do business and are eager to do so. As chairman, I welcome your call at 479-684-3700 or visit us online at signature.bank and tell them that you heard about us first at I Am Northwest Arkansas. Signature Bank of Arkansas is a member of the FDIC and an equal housing lender. It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. I'm excited to be with you today, as I always am. You guys know I always say that I am excited. So if you hear my voice, you know I'm excited. So I'm sitting here today. This episode is going to be about the Buffalo National River. A lot of you guys have said, hey, have you ever gone to float the Buffalo? And it's actually something that I have not done. I've been to the Buffalo River, but I've never floated the Buffalo River. and When I got introduced to the two people that are sitting with me today, I said, you know what? I definitely want to have these guys on the podcast because the Buffalo River is a part of Northwest Arkansas. And it's it's one of those things that you don't think about it until you're actually there. It's not in your face. You're not driving down 49 and see it. But once you get there and you realize that, oh my gosh, this beautiful treasure is right in our backyards, it makes you realize what a wonderful place Northwest Arkansas is. And so without further ado, I want to welcome Terry Martindale, who was the board president of the Buffalo National River Partners, and Cassie Brandstetter, who is the brand board chief of interpretation and the uh, public information officer for the Buffalo National River. If there's anything you ever wanted to know, about the Buffalo National River. Casey is your person. So without further ado, ladies, how are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing great, Randy. Good, Thank you. Good. Now, Equally excited to be here yes. as you. Oh, yeah. perfect, perfect. Well, well, <laughs> well, shout out to Dave Morton for introducing us and getting us involved and connected. And, and I also appreciate Signature Bank because that's how I connected with Dave through my connection and affiliation with Signature Bank, which is also a proud partner of this podcast, I Am Northwest Arkansas. So we'll just put that out there. It's always good to have relationships and be in contact with really good people. And that's because of that, you guys are sitting here with me today. So thank you so much. Let's get into this. And Terry, why don't we talk real quickly about the Buffalo National River Partners and about your organization? Because when you came to me, you said, hey, you know, I really want to make sure that we're able to tell our story and to talk about why this year, more than any other year, is truly important. This is your 50th anniversary. It is. It is. Yeah. And thanks for letting us tell the story. (laughs) 
Our organization, the Buffalo National River Partners, has been around since 2007. Mm -hmm. Started with just a small group of people who were already volunteers on the river, which since the river has become a national river, we've had folks that want to take care of it. And so these people were already doing that. And the superintendent at that time said, hey, we really need an official uh, partners group. And they formed that partners group of five board members, kept doing their thing, which included regular river cleanups and invasive plant removal, trail maintenance, and fun, and just having fun together on the river, which that was always part of that. And so 2007, we're a pretty young organization. Our board has grown from five to 15. And right now we have 14 of those positions full. So we're pretty close to full. And our, the kinds of events that we hold and the way we operate has evolved over those years from those early, sure. early meetings. Yeah. So just so people have a better understanding, can you explain your, you know, how you guys exist in relationship to the actual Buffalo National River, right? Because, I mean, yeah. a lot of times people conflate the two and think, oh, well, you know, you're responsible for what my parking fees are and all this other stuff when I go to the Buffalo River, yeah. anything like that. So just kind of for the audience, help them to understand, you know, how you guys exist. Yes, you started out in 2007. Your focus has been just keeping up what already exists, but can you just kind of describe the the, yeah. the separation between the two? And Casey can probably help do this. We are the official partner, which means we have a memorandum of understanding with the park. <laughs> yep. And that puts uh, some guidelines around how we operate. Mm -hmm. We're not the park. You know, we don't follow all the, you know, every rule that these park employees do, but we do agree to some uh, particular uh, ways of being. We are not political. We are the friendly face of the park that helps the park accomplish its goals. Casey, would you have anything to add to that? I think that last piece right there, Terry, that you mentioned, helping the park reach its goals is a really key piece. As the official partner, nonprofit partner organization yes. to Buffalo National River, the management team of Buffalo National River sets goals for what the park will accomplish in a year, accomplish in five years. And sometimes those goals are large, lofty goals. Yeah. And we need our community partners to help us in this. And Buffalo National River Partners are the first organization to stand up and say, hey, how can we help you achieve these goals to make Buffalo National River be the best it can possibly be? And they do an exceptional job at that. Okay. Thank you. All right. And so some of the things that the river cannot do for itself, which would be to advertise for itself. Sure. To solicit funds from the public. You know, a big opportunity that Buffalo National River helps the community with and gets help from our partner organization with is volunteers. The connections to the community that these community board members have, the way that they have an insight into the needs of the community can represent those needs to the management team of Buffalo National River is really important, along with bringing those volunteers who can support um, activities. They do invasive species removal in the park, cleanups, river cleanups in the park, coordinating those big activities and bringing in the community to be a part of that. Such a key space yeah. that Buffalo National River Partners fills. Yeah. And that's funny. You mentioned that because that's how we got connected. Dave was like, hey, we would love if you could tell our story on your podcast. First, he was like, can you just run a commercial for the events? And I was like, I could do better than that. <laughs> I could do a podcast because I've actually wanted to do a podcast about the Buffalo National River. So this allows me to do a good, you know, a good turn for the community. Absolutely. This is this yeah. because I'm connected with somebody that's on the board. And it also allows me to provide much needed information about the Buffalo National yeah. River to my listening audience, which is not just people in Northwest Arkansas. But there are people that are coming here to move, that are coming to move here for work, for retirement, people that are coming here to visit. You know, so this kind of information is invaluable. Yeah. And what better way to share it than by connecting with people in your local mm -hmm. community? 
Well, one of the things that surprises me, and maybe it shouldn't, but often when I introduce myself as part of the Buffalo National River Partners, people don't know we exist. And so when you're a small organization, having this opportunity that you're giving us to kind of, it's just another way to get that word out. We're out here and we have a particular agenda in terms of being directly related to the park and its needs. And people can join us in that and we need them to. (laughs) Sure, sure. So, and there are actually ways for people to join the Buffalo National River Partners and that's why they call it partners, right? Because yes. it's, it's like you could be a partner with the Buffalo National yeah. River. So yeah. so why don't you, and, and of course, I, I want to talk about that some more, but what are some of the things that you guys are doing as a partnership with the Buffalo National River? You've mentioned something about invasive species yeah. and some of the other programs, but just give the listeners an idea of like the full plate of what you guys are able to do in conjunction with the National River. Yeah. Okay. So. Typical things pre COVID, <laughs> and now we're coming back to those coming things. Coming out of it, yeah. Are we do regular education programs, okay. usually a monthly program in a local library or community college, sometimes actually out in the field, you know, along a trail or a pavilion. Mm-hmm. And so those education programs are well attended and they, the, information that we bring there might be from college professors such as Dr. Brooks Blevins. He is from Missouri State University. We'll be at our community college in Harrison, North Ark, next week, and he'll be talking about his third book, The Ozarkers. And so he has, over the past few years, come as part of our education series and he, to talk about the culture. Sure. And what is it like when people's private land becomes public land. You know, the human side of this incredible resource that we have, but there's always a cost. And so he's just a good example. We've had professors from the U of A. We have scientists come and try to bring that science down to, to the normal person's level and talk about what's going on in the water, the mussels, the fish, the varieties, someone that might talk about the wildflowers. So the education program is goes on about eight months out of the year. Okay. We do have regular invasive species. We have a stilt grass removal project that is annual in the upper district. And the Sierra Club from U of A has traditionally been a big part of making that happen. And, you know, I won't go into the details of that because we could talk forever about why it's important <laughs> to remove invasive species. Yeah, but, I mean, that goes without um, saying. That, so. That's one of the programs that we do in, in various places. We are our dedicated to uh, the cemetery renovations in the park. When the park became a public land, then that incorporated uh, scores Mm -hmm. of private cemeteries. Wow. And so... I'm sure that some of those cemeteries date back to the 1800s. Oh, or before. Mm -hmm. Or before. Or before. Yeah. And so we're dedicated to providing money and getting the word out, helping to get volunteers to come and clean those places up and help them be the sacred places that they are. Sure, they sure. look that way, like yeah, somebody's yeah. paying attention to that. We will do particular fundraisers, maybe small community gatherings where we bring people. We call them mix and mingles. Okay. Somebody will host a mix and mingle, invite people to that. We'll provide some food. We'll pro- Usually we'll have a park person come and we'll just talk about the park, and then our organization, which is an arm of the park that helps it accomplish what it needs to accomplish. Really, this year has been a great example of what BNRP can do for the park. This is our 50th anniversary. I know, I Buffalo know. National River is turning 50 in 2022. It's a, a big anniversary. And as a park unit, we wanted to have big plans for how to celebrate that with our community. Sometimes big plans cost big money. Sure, sure. sure. <laughs> and Buffalo National River Partners has been really helpful in making sure that we could accomplish our goals. Not only accomplish them, but ensure that we are celebrating in such a way that we are representing all perspectives of relationships with the river and with the public land we have. I mean, I'm looking at, they, you know, it's, and we'll make sure we put a link to this on the website, but you guys had a history weekend from February 26th to March 1st of this year. 
There were a bunch of events that took place all over Northwest Arkansas. And then you guys have an Art in the Park weekend, which people that are listening to this particular episode will be able to participate. That's happening June 9th through the 12th of 2022. And then you're going to have a uh, Park RX weekend for those that like to get out and, and get in their RVs and come out. I'm assuming that they can come and camp in the park and take advantage of that. Yeah. So, we yeah. have many campgrounds in the park. It's a great way to get in nature and spend a weekend. We're not too far away. Right. How much land are we talking about when, when we talk about the buff? Because, I, you know, my mind I'm seeing, I see a river, you know, of course, there's a Colorado River. You, I mean, <laughs> you, you, you see many different rivers and, you know, there's a lot of space around it. But how much land, just, just for people to have an understanding of how big the area is? I love that you asked that question, Randy. <laughs> Something that a lot of folks don't recognize is that when Buffalo National River was created in 1972, it was the very first national park unit with the designation of National River. Okay. We are the very first national river. And that is because whenever the people of Northwest Arkansas came together and lobbied to create this public land, they did not only want to protect the river mm -hmm. and the river corridor, they wanted to protect as much of the watershed as they possibly could. Sure. Now, 11% of the Buffalo River watershed is protected in our park unit. Now, what does 11% look like? 95,000 acres of land. Wow. So 95,000 acres of land are protected as a gym, as you mentioned whenever we started, of natural and cultural beauty that is unique to Arkansas, but mm -hmm. unique to the entire nation. Yeah. As a federal national park unit, this is a gem for every single American in the country to come to a free flowing river that protects such a large swath of that watershed for this unique river that we have. Sure. You want to add something, Terry? I was just thinking about the, the river itself. You were talking about land. The Full length of the river is about 150 miles. Okay. All right. Uh, but the river, the national park part of that is about 135 miles. Okay. And so that actually spreads over the course of about five counties mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and five rural counties. Sure. You know, being in Arkansas, period, we're talking rural for the most part. Yep. Where we are today, right here in northwest Arkansas. Here and in Little Rock would be really the only two places that are less than agriculture. I mean, they're right. more a little more urban. But the river itself is along that urban corridor, fairly sparsely populated. And it touches the, in historically speaking, the lives of all kinds of different mountain people. Mm -hmm. And part of what we want to do as a partner group is to kind of help those people to feel like they are still a valuable and important part of the national park. Even yeah. though, you know, that they, yes, this is a national river now, but your presence here and your excitement about it and advocation of it is really is what'll keep it. So what do you guys from, from the B, and I'll use the acronym BNRP, yeah. from your perspective, how do you keep in contact with those communities? that are along the Buffalo River? Uh, various ways. Okay. Uh, of course, the first way that everybody keeps up is through social media sure. right now. Sure. You know, anything over the internet, we, we con continually, from our Facebook page and Instagram, we post what's going on. Okay. Um, we will have programs in different parts of the river. For example, this, this program next week is actually in Boone County and adjoining county. The next one will be in Newton County, which actually has a water. It, that water runs right through that county. We will have those gatherings in those various locations. Let's see, how else do we connect to those people? I mean, I think a, a fun way that you do it is just by having members from many of those counties on your board. That's exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's how we strive to do that is keep all, all of those counties represented just through our board. Yeah. Well, and I mean, again, this whole plan that you guys came up with as a way to celebrate the Buffalo National River, I'm assuming that you put, there's a lot of work and effort that went into this. And I think there are a lot of supporters of this this event coming, this whole program for mm -hmm. the year, Arvest Foundation, 
Shout out to those guys, Adventure Subaru, outstanding car dealership right here locally in Northwest Arkansas. Of course, Bass Pro Shops, because there wouldn't be a good Bass Pro Shops if you if you didn't have a good place to go fishing. So <laughs> one, one, yeah. hand, one hand washes Just the do. other. FedEx Freight and uh, Magnus Toyota. I mean, there, there are a number of organizations. And of course, we've got to, again, shout out Signature Bank of Arkansas and Staff Bank, Entergy, and Joe and Catherine Nance. And so there are, I mean, not just businesses, but there are people that find real value in giving back to the Buffalo National yeah. River. And I, I, I kind of think like that's why you guys exist, because you've kind of created that opportunity for people to just say, hey, instead of coming up to a park range and saying, hey, I want to come up and clean up this area, you guys are able to organize a lot of the right. things that happen. And when someone comes to you with a new idea of a way that you can serve the needs of the Buffalo National River Park, you're like, you know what? That actually might be a good way to do that. That's exactly right. We hope to be that that friendly face that people feel comfortable hanging out with and yeah. coming to. And when you talked about signing up for events, we have you know, a direct way to do that through our website. Right. You know, when we have an event, then you can go to that event on the calendar. And if, if we need volunteers for that, click on it and there you go. Right. Because, I mean, really, and that, and that is, those events are both, and that the website is bnrpartners.org. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. That's exactly and then you, right. I'm assuming on the actual Buffalo National River website, you have information linking to BNR Partners as well, right? We do. Okay. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So, and that kind of shows the symbiotic relationship that Does. you guys both have. So, and we have their, we also have that link to, to them as well. To them too, yeah. to the, the river. So. It's a two way street. It really is. <laughs> so, and um, we like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Terry, tell me this. I mean, you know, you're the board president of this, this fabulous organization. Was this something that, you know, was, where did your desire, just you personally, where did your desire uh, come from to be involved in a program like this? I was telling Casey on the way over here just a little bit about that. When Back when I was in college, my husband and I were in college down in South Arkansas at Henderson State University. Okay. My husband worked at Dogpatch as a traveling, you know, one of those musicians. That, sure. And just loved the mountains. Loved it up here. And I love the river and what felt like the clean, fresh air and determined that one day he wanted to live back up here where he worked. And so when we were married, we had an opportunity to come this way. We had two young kids and we brought them with us and we wanted the mountains and the river to be in their backyard. Sure. So right at the beginning, seeing the value of the open spaces and the river and the cleanliness of that waterway yeah. was valuable because we Arkansas has a lot of water. Sure. But it sure. is not all clean. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really the beginning of that for me. And in terms of being on the board, I had retired as a music educator and we're doing some other things. And just a friend that was on the board said, Hey, would you like to be on this board? And that's how things happen, right? Exactly. Your, your friends yeah. say, this is a good thing. Come and do this. And, yeah. and I did. So I've been on there seven years. This is my second year as president. And okay. typically we roll off every sure. couple of years. Sure. But I got in and on this big couple of years. <laughs> <for the laughs> right. I mean, you, your timing was impeccable, it right? Was, or the something like that. Anniversary. <laughs> so, well, no, that's, that's perfect. I, I love hearing stories like that. And, and I'm going to take a moment just to tell people here that, you know, when you come here, if you already live here in Northwest Arkansas, you need to get involved. I don't care what it is. It could be the Buffalo National River. It could be Devil's Den. It could be anything that's happening in this area. Of course, we are surrounded by some of the greatest outdoor locations that, I mean, known to man, right? I mean, we, when you think of it, I always say it's an embarrassment of riches how we can step outside of our doors and literally in our car and in a five or 10 minute drive be transported yeah. to the great outdoors, like really the great outdoors, not like a park, but like yeah. the great outdoors. And that's the beauty of it. I've had the park superintendent from Hobbs State Park on here, oh, yeah. uh, Mark Clippinger. And, and you know, I'm just amazed at what's right in our backyard. And the Buffalo National River is no exception, yeah. right? And a lot of people need to know about that and take advantage of it because, you know, when you tell people, oh, I, I you know, I have friends. I literally have friends. I, I had a tenant that would float the buffalo like every weekend that the good weather would bring. Yeah. He was he would was take there. It, he was there. He would take his <laughs> boat and, and kayak and, and get out there. And, and he just absolutely loved it. He's like, oh, you got to come. And 
I would always, I was always so busy and I, and I, I regret not going out. I could still go with him because we're still friends, but you know, it's, it's one of those things where you don't, sometimes you don't realize what you have right in your own backyard right. until you take advantage and of it. And the nice thing about the Buffalo is that even though it's a pretty gentle flowing river, sure. you know, the closer to the top you get, the more excitement there is. <laughs> and you get that excitement this time of year. Right, right, <laughs> right. This time of year through uh, April, maybe early May, depending on the water. But there's pretty much not not a time of year that you can't float the buffalo right. somewhere. Right, right. So you move on down the river as it gets warmer, you've got water down there. You yeah. go to the lower. So um, you're right. It's And it's it's easily accessible for the most part compared to other parks in our nation. Sure, sure, absolutely. And it's so far free. Yeah, that's, <laughs> and that's a key point. That's a key point. So there's really no excuse. And there are, Cassie, you can talk about this. There are actually a lot of companies along the Buffalo River where you can park your car, rent a boat or kayak, and then float down a ways and then be picked up and brought back to you. I mean, yeah. so so talk just a little bit about what that kind of experience is like, even if somebody were to be making a day trip from Northwest Arkansas to come out to the park. If you're not like Randy and you don't have a friend with a boat who can take you, <laughs> it is totally possible. We have many business partners who have contracts with the Buffalo National River, and their job is to provide that amenity sure. to folks who are coming through. Okay. Um, they will rent kayaks, canoes, and they can even drop you off, pick you back up, because unlike some folks who may assume it's a lazy river whenever you get on it, right. <laughs> you're going to wind up at a different place than what, than what you started at whenever sure. you get on Buffalo River. So there are lots of opportunities to experience it. You know, people, the recreational ideas are changing. Mm -hmm. Whenever Buffalo National River was first created in 1972, canoes were the way to go. Right. You were going to canoe on the river. Yeah. I personally am a really horrible canoeist. <laughs> I like that we're moving to kayaks. Yeah. I like my kayak. <laughs> but even folks are moving to paddle boards. Sure, People really sure. appreciate taking paddle boards out on the river. No matter what your recreational habit that you enjoy, even if water's not your thing, yeah. You know, that 95,000 acres of land includes hundreds of miles of hiking trails okay. and hiking trails that are in designated wilderness where you can walk for miles and not see another soul. Hiking trails where you can see many on yeah. popular days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of the neat pieces about our federally protected public land is that as you're on that riverway, as you're on those trails, you're not going to see big mansions yeah. right next door. Yeah. You're not going to see those businesses even where you can rent your canoes and kayaks right next to the riverway. We want to provide you with that purely natural experience. Sure. That's what you're going to get in this protected area. Okay. So you, you've, so kayaking, paddle boarding, canoeing, hiking, just a, a casual ramble, if you will, in, in the forest. What else can you do at Buffalo National River Park? Yeah. So Terry mentioned that, you know, we are a rural area. And one of the benefits of that rural area is the night sky that we get. Okay. So, you know, living here in a city, if you try to look up and see the Milky Way, you're probably not going to have a chance to have that experience right in the middle of downtown. Mm -hmm. But if you come out and camp at one of the campgrounds at Buffalo National River and you just happen to look up at night, thousands and thousands of stars are going to be spread out before you. Such a beautiful plethora that we were actually designated as an International Dark Sky Association spot okay. here in the United States. World-class night skies and star viewing can be yeah. found. And that's one of the events in our Park RX weekend okay. in the fall is a is a moon party. <laughs> a moon. That's right. Yeah, I see so that hopefully here. A star party. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> and there's also a photo geocaching park scavenger hunt that you guys yeah. are doing. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, there's just a ton of events here that you guys are doing. So in a, not an anniversary year, how would the events compare? Like what you, I mean, obviously you guys are going over the top for this year because oh, yeah. it, it is the year to celebrate, but like next year, you know, if somebody's listening to this down the road and they say, you know, I want to go to the Buffalo National River Park, but they're not doing all those exciting things that the organization was doing for that anniversary event. What are the normal things that you guys will be doing? As a partner's group? Yeah, as a partner's group. Some of group. those things that I mentioned earlier, the invasive grass and removal, right. the education programs, yep. 
we will sponsor interpretive walks mm -hmm. to, for example, the Parker Hickman Homestead or the Jim Beaver, Jim oh. the Lines mm -hmm. Farmstead. Those kinds of historical places will give, will grab a ranger and, and sponsor those kinds of things. We'll just do hikes. Yeah. As a partner group, though, we are not necessarily engaged on a every weekend right, basis. Right, we right. have sort of ups and downs in terms of how much we do and when. One of the main events is typically in the fall where we have the Boxley Meal Tour. Okay. It is. A, and that's every fall. That is every fall. Okay. And it's Boxley Meal Tour and our elk viewing. The elk that are out in the fields, I don't know how many people come to that, but we a lot. <laughs> facilitate that, provide volunteers to talk about that, rangers to give meals, tours. We support youth activities, uh, Special Olympics will provide funds for that so those events can happen in the park. And in uh, the past, Buffalo National River Partners, BNRP, they've funded park rangers to do those yearly activities mm -hmm. of going into schools and doing educational programs, yes, sure. of inviting schools to come to the park to see this awesome space that we have. It's the ultimate field trip. Oh, gosh, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And sometimes classes actually come to the river mm -hmm. in the past they have to have their field trip day. We've sponsored concerts on the banks of the river before and have had great success with that. And we have a a huge day of that this summer as part of the 50th anniversary. Sure. So there's a lot to do, basically. There's a lot yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah, what, whether it's our particular sponsorship yeah. or the parks activities that we may support. Sure. There's something going on generally all the time. Yeah. And the more volunteers we have, the more of these programs we can put on. Yes. And really for volunteers, it's an adult field trip because no matter if you're Pull an invasive species, or you're helping lead a school group. It's going to be a fun day by yeah. the river. Yeah. yeah, it is. So, and then geographically, from where we are, we are we're recording this in downtown Fayetteville. But from here, how long does it take to get out to the Buffalo National River to the closest entrance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're looking at like an hour and 40 minutes. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The so less than two district. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Ponca, and then you still Creek, Carl's right. Landing. You know. And you're transported into a whole different place. Yeah, yeah. in a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah. So can you fish on the river? Sure can. Okay. Yep. Just normal Arkansas fishing regulations apply. Sure. You can hunt at Buffalo National River. Okay. Normal Arkansas hunting regulations apply. All sorts of outdoor activities. We have specific horse trails. Okay. So we have the backcountry horsemen and maybe some other... Uh, horse people organizations, but uh, we have backcountry horsemen on our board. And so they have specific trails for their horses. And Steel Creek, for example, in the upper district was a horse farm. Would you call it a horse farm? What Back in the day yes. before it became yeah. a ranch, it was sort a ranch. of a horse there ranch. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. so that's like a pretty big deal. That's mm -hmm. a lot of lovers of horses sure. that enjoy sure. those trails. Yeah. So you mentioned a couple of things I want to I want to go back to and ask. So you mentioned the elk. What other animal or, or game will you see in the Buffalo National River Park that people would not would not think that you might see there? Yeah, I mean, there are definitely the typical critters that right. are around Sh sure. um, that you'll see more most often. You'll most often see deer that yep. are in the park. Mm -hmm. Armadillo, surprisingly, okay. see a lot of armadillo <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in certain areas. But there are black bear who live Ooh. in the park. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see them a little less, less frequently. They're elusive, but they're out there. The elk, obviously, are one of the largest creatures that you'll find. The only elk herd in the state of Arkansas can be found right at Buffalo National River. Okay. Um, introduced and managed in conjunction with the Arkansas Commission of Game and Fish. Okay. You will find otter, mink, all sorts of species of beaver. fish, obviously, beaver. Yeah. yeah. And we have endangered species of animals that are found at Buffalo National River. Oh. Mussel species are having a hard time right now, freshwater sure. mussel species. And there are endangered freshwater mussels that can be found on that clean waterway that sure. we protect. Yeah. Sure. And what's the primary fish that you would normally see? I know people have trout. There's trout in there in the Buffalo River, right? Bass. Or? Yeah. Is it small bass? Mm -hmm. Small mouth bass. I 
not a fisherman myself okay. yeah. or a fisher okay. person myself, but um, <laughs> um, I only like to catch. So <laughs> yeah, right. The trout are a little bit further at the end of the river. Okay. So the Buffalo River dumps into the White River. Okay. Which is a really unique. And the White River eventually makes its way to the Mississippi. It is does. That right. Okay. Yeah, right, it right. does. It's a unique confluence where the Buffalo and the White River come together okay. because the White River is one of those rivers that were dammed. So you have a very large recreational lake off of the White River. You have deep, cold, cold water that yep. there's trout love mm-hmm. on the White River. Whereas the Buffalo being that undammed space is a natural environment for different cool water, cool, warm water species sure. of fish. Yeah. So there's a little bit of everything out there. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. So so on, for your job, do you just travel the land and keep an eye on things or what's a day like for you? Sure. So I support an awesome staff of rangers who are spread out throughout our 135 miles of riverway who primarily focus on doing education programs and what we call interpretation programs. Interpretation is our official title as rangers. Um, <laughs> we are interpretive rangers, but nobody ever knows what that means. Right. Because most of us don't speak Spanish, and unfortunately we don't speak Marshallese, which yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. But what we do speak is the language of the resources that we protect. Okay. So we speak for those animals who live in the park. We speak for the plants, the waterway. To make sure that not only the community understands this gym that we have in Northwest Arkansas, but they begin to have an appreciation and even more key, a future stewardship of these areas. Because we're here to take care of them today. The rangers I support are here to take care of them today. Yeah. But who will take care of them tomorrow sure. and in the next 50 years? That's what our community can help create. Absolutely. And that's why it's important to get as many young people out there as possible to get them to buy in to why this matters, to get them to put down their phones and, well, I digress, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> to get them to get outdoors and check things out and see yeah. why this all of this stuff matters, because you need to be able to you know, connect with nature. And, you know, just there are a couple of things that you shared that I really want to check out because I'm real big into astronomy and looking at the stars. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to check that out. I didn't even know that there was an organization for Dark dark skies. So I I like that because I I know that there, they, there is a place out in the panhandle of Oklahoma that qualifies for that Mm -hmm. because I've talked to people that have gone out there and they said, man, the sky out there just jumps out at you. And it's like, you could almost touch it. Because it is so dark and there isn't any surrounding light. So you really get to appreciate that. And if you if you have never, and I'm talking to anybody listening to this, if you've never been to a place that's truly, where you can truly see the sky, you need to check it out for yourself. Because then you could really appreciate how big of a world that we're in and, and just the, the stars and the Milky Way and all that good stuff. There's, there's so much out there. So we could go on and on on this. I, I want to close by doing two things, Terry. I want I want to ask you, for anyone that is listening to this and says, you know what, I loved hearing from Terry and, and Cassie, and I want to get involved. I want to become a part of, I want to be a partner with the Buffalo National River. How do I do that? Could you just kind of walk us through real quickly? Yeah, the simplest do? way is to become a member of the Buffalo National River Partners okay. is to go to our website, yep. bnrpartners.org. Right. And when you get there, you're going to find a beautiful website. It's We've worked really hard on that for the last couple of years. And if you just play around on the website, look at what we do, look at the events, which are continually updated, and press the button up in the upper right-hand corner that says join or donate. Sure. And that button is going to take you to a page where you have uh, five or six options of how to become a member. Yeah. But if you just want to become a member, press the button, yeah. and then you can do that a one-time membership, a recurring, which is what we suggest, because most of us forget to re-up our memberships. Exactly. But, yeah. So that's the easiest way. Also, you'll see some of our brochures around. We'll be placing these where we can get them in and at our events this summer. This is the Buffalo uh, River 50th anniversary brochure from Buffalo National River Partners. And it's it in the inside of this it tells you the all of the activities that are specific to fiftieth anniversary. 
But when you open it up and read all that on the back, then it tells you about our organization. Sure. It tells you a little bit about membership. It has a QR code, which will take you directly to our website. And our membership, as much as our sponsors help these big events happen and also help us get to the place where we can fund specific projects in the park that the park can't fund, sure. our membership is what keeps the organization itself going. going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's what we hope that we are able to encourage people from Northwest Arkansas who are already coming to know that we are there and desire their membership. For sure. And it's, I, I think it's a, it's a worthy and worthwhile cause of time and to invest yourself into an organization like what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, because it does make a difference at the end of the day. And we have to be yes. good stewards of the land that we're entrusted with. And so I think it's important for people to to take advantage of it. And if anybody that is listening to this has never been out to the Buffalo National River, to the park itself, you really need to do that. I'm not just saying that because we just did this episode. I'm saying it because you need to get out from behind your desk. You need to get, get out from behind your car and you need to just take in nature a little bit because honestly... Some of the, the greatest inspiration that we find is when we remove ourselves from those daily occurrences that tend to stop us from seeing all of the great things that are happening out there in the world because we're so inundated with the news and bad news and social media and all this other great stuff. There is a time and a place for all of that. But if you can just take a step back for a moment and maybe step into something, into a place like the Buffalo National River Park. You can find yourself transformed in very unique ways. Is that accurate? That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly, you summed that up well. <laughs> okay, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. So, <laughs> well, listen, Terry Martindale, Cassie Brandstetter, thank you guys so much for sitting down with us here at I Am Northwest Arkansas to share a little bit about the Buffalo National River. I'm thankful that my first episode about, and it won't be the last, about the Buffalo National River included you guys and included your stories because they do matter. And I think some people that will hear this will will start to venture out that way and and go east from Northwest Arkansas and just drive east from I-49 and you'll run into it and uh, you shouldn't have any problems and, and, and take advantage of what's there. And certainly if you run into Cassie Brandstetter out there at the National River Park, just say, hey, I, I heard you on the podcast and uh, and give her a fist bump for me if you see her. So, <laughs> But uh, thank you, ladies, both so very much for joining us on the podcast. Thank you, Brandy. We Thanks for having it. us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. Another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember, our episodes come out rain or shine every Monday. We always have a brand new episode. We're always featuring something different about what's happening here in Northwest Arkansas, covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life here in the Ozarks. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I will see you right here next week. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas. It's Randy Wilburn from I Am Northwest Arkansas. Are you looking to learn new skills or to explore a new industry? The Northwest Arkansas Council can connect you with incredible training programs to help you grow. Whether you're interested in a new trade or looking to upskill, they've got you covered. Explore the possibilities at careersnwa.com. That's careersnwa.com, where your next opportunity is waiting for you. Take control of your future today.